Hello, this is Lisa Dudkowski, Global Fertility Business Intelligence Certified Financial Planner, Securities Industry Professional for 18 years and three months left LPL Financial on May 1st, so just less than a month ago. Um, I'm going to read you a letter which is only directed to certain people. It'll be boring to everyone else, but it's for certain members of the CFP board, LPL Financial, the publicly traded company, and some others. So first, let me show you some souvenirs in my office. 16 years and three months with LPL Financial, managing wealth, doing certified financial planning for almost all of those 16 years and three months. But this is gonna go into the souvenir pile because I'm no longer with LPL Financial. LPL Political Action Committee. Um, pretty much foreign governments now, so that should go into the garbage, actually. We have a silver sperm. I'm not going to squeeze it because it'll keep laughing, but a lot of great clients in the IVF and life sciences industry globally. Um, and then we have Martin Luther King, which will always be in my office. I have a dream. Judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Always were for equality, LGBTQ rights. Everybody deserves to have a family and equal opportunity to have a child. But we're for Martin Luther King. We're for JFK and Martin Luther King the big tent Democratic Party that Tulsi Gabbard talks about. And my CFP, Northwestern University degree, for the two years that I studied extra coursework at Northwestern for two years to get the CFP certification. Member in excellent stellar exemplary standing. But the CFP board has become politically weaponized beyond belief they have in charge of the disciplinary and ethics commission joel leslie koningsberg a 62 year old balding little man from new york city who has way too many conflicts of interest should not be on a disciplinary and ethics committee which we'll get to but Nobody signed this 82 page, no, 89 page motion for immediate suspension of my CFP certification. Nobody would even sign it. Despite me asking five or six times, nobody would send me a hard copy in the mail with the signature, 20 different cooks cooking this broth. Nobody will tell me who's responsible for it, but the names on it, Eric Nicholas Frias, young Washington, D.C. attorney with Daisy and Frias. He's disbarred, by the way, from the D.C. federal courts. He's disbarred. He's removed. So they give me an attorney who's disbarred from practicing law in the federal courts. And his picture is all over it because he was just mad printing out my personal journalism, my LinkedIn. And then um, er, this Joel Koningsberg with Morgan Stanley out of New York. So this letter I'm going to read is to the CFP board, General Counsel of the Disciplinary and Ethics Commission, Aaron Ardell Copel, who's with, I think, something like Gates K&L. I don't know what her firm is, but um, Kevin Keller, the president who I've known for a long time. He came to Illinois years ago to the McDonald's campus. He was making almost a million dollars a year. Then he makes over a million dollars a year um, to work for the politically weaponized CFP board. Leo 
Rydzewski. He's the general counsel, Leo R-Y-D-Z-E-W-S-K-I, of the entire CFP board. And he has not gotten back to me, but this is not for Eric Nicholas Frias. He should be disbarred. He is disbarred from the um, federal court in D.C. He, but he should be disbarred from practicing law for his prurient stalking of my personal journalism and LinkedIn and his defamatory lies in his 89 page document. There are so many lies. He even says, I met with the CFP board and waived my right to counsel. No, I have not talked to anyone at the CFP board about any of this. This is to LPL Financial, stock symbol LPLA. Michelle Oroshakoff and Dan Arnold, who I know both of them. Dan Arnold wrote me a lovely handwritten letter um, thanking me for things over the years, not too long ago. Um, LPL has an obligation to stop the CFP board to uphold your end of our separation agreement. Michelle Oroshakoff, Dan Arnold, supervisors, CFPs I trust, Heads of NASAA, the North American Securities Administration, FINRA, SEC, Morgan Stanley, you represent Joel Leslie Koningsberg, CFP and 13 years at Morgan Stanley, 29 years in the industry. This man has conflicts of interest up the wazoo. He, I filed a complaint with the CFP board against William J. Blythe and Robert F. Blythe for what they were doing last year in my deceased client's account without telling me and without telling LPL Financial that she had passed away. That was on May 1st. May 4th, the CFP board, 72 hours later, comes back Joel Koningsberg and Eric Nicholas Frias, the disbarred DC attorney, with a motion for immediate suspension saying, I released confidential information on LinkedIn. No, she, my client Helen Ramirez Odell was a public figure in Chicago. They did a house resolution. They did a Senate bill, the probate court, which she shouldn't even have a probate estate. She did not want one, is totally 100% public. Um, the Cook County Recorder of Deeds and Courts for all that they were doing the blights with her property and Reuben Law, Benjamin and Brian Reuben, who I helped do her estate planning in 2015, early 2016, maybe even talked to them in 2014. But now 2015, 2016, I met with them. I helped them do her letter of intention, do her wills, pour over wills, do her special needs trusts. So these people were transacting in my deceased client's estate and not telling me and not telling LPL Financial the deaths, estates, and divorces and the people they were supposed to tell me, the certified financial planner of 12 years to this client. And so after I alerted the CFP board that her money was illegally moved in mid to late April, they try to protect the 70-year-old Blythe and Associates in Chicago who used a supervisor's illegal signature that was a non-compliant signature a little over a month ago to remove to move the money, which is completely illegal. That's called money laundering. That's called fraud. When you move somebody's accounts with illegitimate non-compliant signatures, that is called fraud and that is called money laundering. And I was under advisor compliance manual obligation and CFP board code of ethics obligation to report exploitation of vulnerable adults, special needs disabled, vulnerable adults if their money is being misappropriated. So I did what I'm obligated to do by the CFP board code of ethics and by LPL financial. Um, advisor compliance manual and all of our rules over 16 years and three months. Three days later, they file a motion to protect these Blythe brothers who were doing all the illegal things in her account. So Morgan Stanley's James Gorman, um, I wrote him 
two days later, he's basically fired. He has 12 months left, sometime within the 12 months. But James Gorman is being let go because they're offshoring all of Morgan Stanley. Why do you think about 10,000 employees, including another 3,000 yesterday, mostly investment bankers yesterday, are being let go from Morgan Stanley? Because they're offshoring everything to Saudi Arabia, to Germany, to Jordan, all over the world, India. They're offshoring the whole company. So, yeah, James Gorman is an Australian CEO. I reached out to him to find out how to make a complaint about Joel Koningsberg. No one got back to me at the CFP board. I mean, sorry, at Morgan Stanley. And if you Google Joel Koningsberg, what was coming up for me the other day was his Twitter in Arabic. What was coming up for Morgan Stanley compliance and complaints was a Saudi Arabia email address. And then Germany was the second one that came up. And then Jordan was the third compliance and complaints email. Then I went to the complaints, compliance, code of conduct manual, and all the links were broken. Like, even if you're an American, you can't even access the links within their manual to make a complaint. But no one got back to me at Morgan Stanley about this Joel Leslie Koningsberg. And it's a total conflict that he's the chair of the Disciplinary and Ethics Commission. And I filed a complaint against the Blythes. But three days later, he's filing a complaint against me. Not to mention the fact that I have FINRA regulatory complaints since last year pending and this year against the Blights and other people who are doing illegal things in my clients' accounts. And Joel Leslie Koningsberg is an arbitrator with FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. And the people I have the complaints against have falsified broker check reports where they report exams on January 2nd of 2023 that they probably didn't even take. And then there is mass backdating of direct investment, municipal securities, municipal sales rep, um, sales supervisor, general securities rep, all these licenses to do with investment banking and um, municipal investment banking, and there's mass fraud going on at FINRA in the broker checks reporting system, and I've reported this on so many people, including the Blythe brothers, both um, Lauren Scott Kyes, my former supervisor from March 2021 to March 2023, before they gave me John Scarbino for my last 30 days, he was supposed to be impartial and objective, but he was tied into the Blythe brothers in Chicago because he told me on the phone he had talked to my client's disabled daughter. Then he said, oh, I made a mistake. It was Bridget Tracy, who's an actress in Chicago and who lied about being at my client's dying bed bedside and being her best friend and lied about her dying wish being to have a Mother Jones statue erected. None of this is true. Her wishes for or her life after she passed were all in her will, pour over will and trust. And none of it was what Miss Geraci said. So Scarabino and Lauren Scott Kyes have falsified broker check reports too. And the Marietta, California advisor they gave me, supervisor for the last 30 days, was tied into this whole thing with the Blythes doing things in her account last year without telling me and without telling LPL Financial. And Scarabino's the one that put the five fraudulent signatures and got the money moved. And LPL General Counsel, Michelle Oroshakoff, would not give me a counterparty signature to mine. So they moved my client of 12 years money and would not even tell me who signed the other side of the transaction to move the money. All they would give me was fraudulent signatures. So I'm making a complaint to Morgan Stanley, but no one will tell me who to complain to. Because like I said, his Twitter, Koningsberg, was in um, Arabic. And 
I Googled and I got a Saudi Arabia complaints address and a German complaints address and a Jordan one. So this is to the CFP board, not Frias, because he's disbarred from the federal courts. He was removed and he's an absolute creep and liar who was stalking my personal social media where I only did journalism. So I'll just read this. Dear Miss Copel, I suggest we call each other by first names, Aaron and Lisa, as your motion for immediate suspension is highly illegal, tra traitorous, a witch hunt, public stoning, and a farce. Your harassment and defamation is endangering me, my CFP partner of 15 years who is suddenly being badly harassed, has led to a scary bearded man stalking my house when I was in Arizona visiting a friend and supporting her business. Leaving off Eric Nicholas Frias is intentional, as he is breaking United States law, was stalking my personal journalism-only LinkedIn, and has a sick, prurient interest in hurting me, my ability to make a living, and my family, including my elderly parents and family. I hereby order you, the Washington DC weaponized CFP board to cease and desist all, any and all actions against me immediately and to send me an apology in response within 24 hours. This is a cease and desist demand. My elderly mother is copied on this and she says you are going to give her a heart attack. Your defamation and lies are beyond the pale. Aaron Copel, I have said numerous times that the old personal email I used to renew my CFP annually for 15 years is not a good email to use for this as I handle all my personal details, junk mail, etc. there. I get 500 mostly junk mails a day there and cannot keep up with it. Please keep in mind that for the first time in 18 years and three months, I do not have a business email. So I've had to create an email to prioritize the CFP board's recent illegal onslaught of garbage and lies. LPL obligated me to separation terms. So my priority was removing all of the LPL branding from everything looking for a hard copy of some of Helen Ramirez O'Dell's estate planning documents as my supervisor at LPL Financial had books and records deleted from client works, including her letter of intention drafted by the Rubens, Ruben Law, with me, which is heavily referenced in LPL Financial emails. I have moved residences during my 12-year financial planning relationship with Helen Ramirez O'Dell, moved offices, moved storage locations, etc. I never expected that my supervisory team would be systematically deleting emails 60,000 in my last month alone. It was on Greek Easter that I logged into my email and 60,000 emails were suddenly deleted. And my books and records and client works as well as service requests were all deleted by LPL Financial. I have some of it back up. You do not understand. I worked with Helen Ramirez O'Dell for 12 years, right up until early 2022 before she passed away. When Helen passed away and her second husband passed away a month after her, Brian and Benjamin Rubin and Day One Pact and the Blythe brothers knew because it was 100% source that they knew and were obligated by law to tell me, Helen Ramirez O'Dell CFP and LPL Financial, that Helen had passed away. The Rubens and Day One Pact were the trustees named to Helen's Special Needs Family Trust, the Mora Melendez Family Trust. This is public record. This is all at the probate court, which there shouldn't even be a public probate estate because Helen did not want one so this is against her wishes that this is all public. This is all public because they were meddling in and transacting in Helen's special needs estate while withholding Helen's death from LPL Financial and me, Helen's certified financial planner. My compliance partner, CPA partner, and my mom 
all knew Helen Ramirez O'Dell and have met with her in recent years. It was well known that Helen Ramirez O'Dell did not want anything to do with William J. Blythe and Robert F. Blythe. They were senior citizens almost Helen's age and were pushy and hard selling. And I even met with Helen's CPS annuity reps at Chicago Public Schools annuity reps who all shared the same concerns about the Blythe's reputation. Aaron, as I have explained to you many times, and yes, everything sent from this email is my response. You now claim all of this went to your jump folder and you only saw it four days ago, but that is a lie too, as you have been e emailing me as if you saw my reply since before four days ago. Furthermore, you erroneously state April 19th as the day when you received one of my replies. It may have been slightly after midnight Central Standard Time on May 19th, but that was just further stating prior replies which were definitely sent. You are a lawyer and do not even get dates accurate. This is all a farce that must cease and desist immediately. Aaron Eric Nicholas Frias is disbarred from the D.C. District Court's federal courts. His profile says removed, which means disbarred. I completely reject, disavow, and give um, my Morgan Stanley complaint about Joel Koningsberg CFP to James Gorman and Mr. Burns in the Legal and Compliance Department of Morgan Stanley for standing behind Joel Koningsberg CFP and his illegal defamation of me, and Eric Nicholas Frias, the disbarred young lawyer's 89 pages of defamation against me. Furthermore, Aaron, you're, you are in provis or provisional in-between status with the Washington, D.C. courts and are not in good standing either, though you, you are not fully disbarred, removed like Mr. Frias. Contrary to your instruction, Aaron Copel, on an email that I have told you multiple times not to use for this, as I cannot ensure timely receipt, that I must copy a disbarred D.C. young attorney, this is absolutely false and harassment. And consider this legal orders to keep Eric Nicholas Frias out of my life and out of my business. I have a complaint with the D.C. Attorney Disciplinary Commission against both Eric Nicholas Frias and you, Aaron Ardell Copel, and with Kevin Keller and Leo Rydzewski to disbar Eric Nicholas Frias from the Washington, D.C. bar altogether and give Ms. Copel an opportunity to apologize. Today, out of the blue, Aaron, you send me a 90-minute hearing date on June 2nd, 2023 with no communication with me. I am in a two-day conference during those dates. I'm in a separate four-day conference the first half of June and may be traveling for a job interview just past the mid-June mark. This is yet to be finalized. So I am wholly unavailable that day as I am committed to a conference. Furthermore, Aaron, Eric Nicholas Frias wrote an illegal document on May 4th, 2023. Three days after my CFP board complaint against William J. Blythe, Robert F. Blythe and Blythe and Associates, who hid my client Helen Ramirez O'Dell's death from me and from LPL Financial and tried to launder her accounts two times, when she told me and my partners, mutual friends, that she would never, ever want to work with the Blythe brothers, ever. And I have witnesses. Plenty. On April 13th, 2023, Marietta, California, LPL supervisor John Scarabino turned into me and LPL Financial five totally fraudulent Adobe font signatures as his name, by which he moved a large amount of Helen Ramirez O'Dell's money, five accounts, presumably, to William J. Blythe, who Helen Ramirez O'Dell did not want ever touching her special needs beneficiary's money. LPL Financial allowed five accounts to be money laundered when the signatures were not all wet signatures and were not in DocuSign with envelope IDs either. Miss Copel, you are not in the securities industry and you are not a CFP. 
but accounts of a deceased client cannot be moved without re-registering the accounts to the trustees and without the wet signatures or DocuSign signatures with envelope ID. I did everything 100% legally and according to LPL Financial Advisor Compliance Manual and CFP Board Code of Ethics. If money laundering occurs, we are mandated by our agreements with LPL Financial and CFP Board to report the money laundering to the CFP Board and to LPL Financial. You cannot threaten my $60,000 and two-year extra college education CFP over my fulfilling my CFP Board Code of Conduct and LPL Financial Regulatory and Advisor Compliance Manual responsibilities. Sorry, this is not going to happen, Aaron. And you and my defamers and United States traders, Eric Nicholas Frias, disbarred in D.C., and Joel Koningsberg, Morgan Stanley CFP, who Twitter, whose Twitter comes up in Arabic, and the number one compliance, um, compliant emails to report him are in Saudi Arabia, Germany, and Jordan. Hello. And less than two days after I report Joel Koningsberg to Morgan Stanley, Saudi Arabia compliance, as that's the only email that came up in Google, Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman is stepping down within three within 12 months and almost 10,000 Morgan Stanley employees are suddenly laid off all in the past days since I contacted James Gorman about this that's a little coincidental notice to CFP board and Aaron and Kevin and Leo the United States of America, FinCEN, SEC, FINRA, Department of the Treasury, CIFUS, NSA, Department of Defense, don't take kindly to offshoring the United States of America. CFP Board, you have totally weaponized the Washington, D.C. CFP Board to do the work of foreign governments against the interests of the United States of America. That's treason by the way. So CFP board is already in danger of losing its not-for-profit status with the IRS and with the Federal Trade Commission because you're not acting as a not-for-profit. You're not acting to protect advisors and their clients. You're acting to protect criminals and Joel Koningsberg's firm, which is completely offshoring, which is why James Gorman didn't just decide to step down. He's being forced by the U.S. military to step down. The U.S. military is behind the layoffs at Morgan Stanley because they're offshoring everything. And they're behind a lot right now that people don't know with the financial companies. But um, I'm going to not report that for a while. Notice to CFP board and Aaron... Oh, did I read this? Within five days of my reporting to LPL Financial General Counsel on March 26, 2021, that my LPL supervisor, Lauren Scott, oh, that would be 2023, March 26, 2023, that my LPL supervisor, Lauren Scott Kyes, had falsified FINRA broker check reports in common with John Alexander Moore and Paul Victor Horiat III of totally offshored Breen Asset Management and Breen Capital, his former fixed income capital co-principals of five years, Breen then laundered $700 million within 18 hours of LPL President Dan Arnold's office calling me. And this is the same exact LPL supervisor, Lauren Scott Kyes, who colluded with the Chicago LPL Blythe & Associates to steal my deceased client's accounts after she died. This is disgusting, and they call, along with LPL Financial's young attorney, Roma Patel, um, and they all put the special needs disabled heir under undue influence because the disabled special needs daughter was in touch with me continuously up until her mom passed away. And then she became totally non-responsive, and I warned LPL Financial of this many times last summer that I could not reach her or her mother, and begged LPL Financial in writing for help. Well, if the mailroom wouldn't have withheld the returned July 
account statements marked deceased until the last days of December of 2022, I, the advisor on those statements, would have gotten the mail back when I was supposed to. But no, the San Diego mailroom of LPL Financial withheld the mail, never imaged it in, and five return statements with my name, Lisa Ditkowski, certified financial planner, and my rep ID at LPL Financial were never given to me until the last days of December 2022. That's the misuse of the CFP. It's the people who were behind hiding her death from me and LPL Financial CFP board. Those are the people who are misusing the CFP with my name on those statements and not giving them to me. My former LPL financial management was sending my deceased client plus other valued large clients of mine totally fraudulent fake LPL letters last August, terminating lots of clients' accounts for no reason, stealing thousands and thousands of dollars of my income and committing United States mail fraud, which carries a 20 to 30 year prison term. Sending my valued clients fake LPL letters, and I have proof of all of this, and LPL and CFP board are protecting the criminals who committed United States mail fraud, mailing people false letters, fraudulent letters about their money. In addition, my supervisor was colluding with William J. Blythe and his LPL financial brother, Robert F. Blythe, to interfere with United States mail and hide five return to sender deceased United States mail statements from me. The LPL financial San Diego mailroom withheld the July 2022 returned Helen Ramirez O'Dell mail statements until 12-23-22 and 12-30-22. This was more than two months after LPL Financial and I were even given a death certificate for Helen Ramirez O'Dell on October 19th, 2022. It is outrageous that criminals within LPL Financial were hiding Helen Ramirez O'Dell's death from her certified financial planner of 12 years, me, and also from LPL Financial, the firm. Meanwhile, the Blythe brothers were sourced to have been doing death and POA seminars at Chicago Public Schools, Chicago Teachers Association, and Retired Teachers Association of Chicago, and to have known through their client, Bridget Duff Duffy Geraci, as told to me on April 13, 2023, by LPL Financial's Marietta, California Supervisor John Scarbino, that Geraci was Scarbino's client that Helen passed away on March 22nd, 2023. Geraci knew that, Lauren Scott Kyes knew that, this is all sourced. The whole corrupt home office supervisory structure, which was weaponized and put under political partisan control, globalist control at LPL Financial, they all knew that and hid her death. It was a coordinated effort with collusion. However, the substance news obituary is a lie. The 85-year-old famed actress was not at Helen's dying bedside at all, and Helen's dying wish was not to have a Mother Jones statue erected, and Bridget Duffy Geraci was not Helen's best friend. It, it was a horrible fake obituary saying, oh, and her daughter was there and oh the husband was very ill and present it made bridget duffy geraci the star of helen ramirez odell's very publicized substance news obituary this is nowhere in helen's estate planning and she mentioned bridget geraci one time in 12 years because of an event in common Bridget was not a close friend and admitted to me and my mother in April of this year that she was lying and did not even know Maura, Helen's daughter, and only knew Helen through the Women's Working History Project. That is all. And then I direct the CFP board to please read Joel Koningsberg's apartment lawsuit with his wife, Koningsberg versus 
333 East 46th Street Apartment Corporation. Koningsberg is chastised by the New York courts and judge for his frivolous lawsuit and poor arguments. They really chastised him. Now I am being retaliated against by Eric Nicholas Frias, disbarred by the United States Federal D.C. Court, and by Aaron Ardell Copel, a lawyer in provisional uncertain status with the Washington, D.C. District Court. Paid harassers for a Washington, D.C. not-for-profit, which should lose its IRS and Federal Trade Commission not-for-profit status immediately. CFP Board's president forever, Kevin Keller, makes well over a million dollars a year and has not gotten back to me. All of last year, late March to late March of this year, 2023, my certified financial planner license designation was wrongly listed as expired with a big red warning label in the one-click find a CFP directory. No one could explain it to me, and John Loper never even had the courtesy to get back to me. But a representative at CFP board took a few hours this past March to fix it. After 12 whole months of me being erroneously listed as expired, and no one could explain why, that's not a glitch. That's not an accident. That was intentional. So anyone going to the Find a CFP website thought I was expired for a whole year, thanks to the weaponized CFP board. Aaron, I have asked you so many questions and you do not answer any of them and completely ignore me and pretend that you were not getting my emails and that they were all going to your junk folder. And, and plus you get dates wrong, April 19th, I think you meant May 19th, I don't know. I seriously ask the Washington DC Attorney Disciplinary Board to look at the unprofessional and harassing and defamatory behaviors of both Frias and Copel and Washington DC General Counsel Leo Rydzewski for completely ignoring my questions and pleas and for dialogue and help. They treat me as completely non-existent except for their false and defamatory motions and emails. Also, please do not send me or the DEs, I'm, I'm quoting, Aaron Copel, please do not send me or the Disciplinary and Ethics Commission filings email address any other information or documents in response to other requests for information or documents that you may have received from other attorneys or other analysts at the CFP board. Those matters are separate from the motion. This is a complete farce. Aaron, what other information are you talking about? Aaron, what other documents are you talking about? Aaron, what other requests are you talking about? Aaron, what other information are you referring to? What other documents may I have received? What other attorneys are you talking about besides you and Eric Nicholas Frias? What do you mean by, quote, those matters? Aaron, as I told you a week ago, my May 1st serious money laundering and CFP board complaint against the Blythe Brothers and Blythe and Associates is necessarily fused with and one and the same with your May 4th, 2023 motion for immediate suspension of me and three page notice of investigation of me asking for totally confidential information, which I am strictly prohibited by my separation agreement with LPL Financial after 16 years and three months perfect record with LPL Financial from giving the CFP board. You cannot let our foreign and domestic enemies of the United States of America solicit me for LPL Financial inside information. Please, Dan Arnold, Michelle Oroshakoff, Brian Boxler, Jason Burgett, can you please step forward and tell the CFP board to cease and desist. I'm trying to protect our separation agreement. They're asking for three pages of information on May 4th that I'm not allowed to give them. It's confidential inside LPL financial information. Um, 
Dan Arnold, the president of LPL Financial, even had Mary Beth Benzing call me 18 hours before Breen Asset Management, Breen Capital, and Supervisor Lauren Scott Kaiser's two former fixed income capital buddies, John Alexander Moore and Paul Victor Horiat III, disappeared $700 million from SEC filings, meaning Breen, not the specific people I mentioned because we don't know who at Breen did it, upon my reporting collusion to LPL Financial. Again, I am in an important conference on June 2nd, 2023, and in conferences the first half of June with possible travel through June 20th relating to looking for work. Mr. Joel Leslie Koningsberg is a 62-year-old white balding man, you can look him up, from Morgan Stanley, New York, who has been with Morgan Stanley 13 years in New York, and his CRD number is 2434311. That's 2434311. I have added him to my FINRA regulatory complaints. He's a FINRA arbitrator. I have complaints with all these people pending with regulatory bodies and you sign an 89 page motion against me CFP board by a FINRA arbitrator, that is a conflict of interest. He has so many outside business activities, STB and associates, STB two and associates, STB three and associates, um, owns all this real estate. Um, yeah, must really make a lot of money at Morgan Stanley. Um, fronting for foreign governments. Joel, um, certified financial planner, board of standards, investment related, Washington, DC, charity, private foundation, commissioner, disciplinary and ethics commission, proprietor, partner, officer, director, employee, trustee, or agent. Since November, 2019, during business hours, 18 hours a week he does this and after business hours six hours or maybe that's a month it could be a month but 24 hours a month he does this and again it's a huge conflict because I filed a DEC complaint against William Blythe on May 1st and he's the chair and then he goes and he signs one against me on May 4th. This is a complete farce. This is completely illegal. And plus he's a FINRA arbitrator and I have pending FINRA regulatory actions. I mean, th th this man should not be anything. He should be fired from the securities industry. He should be let go of the disciplinary and ethics commission for sure. He should not be a FINRA arbitrator. And based on his apartment lawsuit that he lost, he really has no business in the real estate market either. Oh, and then University of Arizona SALT Center Advisory Board Investment Related. I guess he got on his kids' school's um, um, investment advisory committee. Um, poor, poor child. Um, anyway, District of Columbia Financial Regulation Arbitrator FINRA Proprietor Partner Officer. FINRA is supporting him. I have a complaint against him. FINRA is supporting this man. This is just ridiculous. And, and all the people that have the fraudulent FINRA broker check reports. Joel Leslie Koningsberg with the Twitter in Arabic has far too many OBA, outside business activity, conflicts of interest to be chair of the CFP board, ethics and disciplinary commission. Koningsberg is a FINRA arbitrator and I have regulatory complaints pending with FINRA regarding people named in my CFP board May 1st disciplinary and ethics commission complaint. Koningsberg absolutely should have recused himself for multiple codes of ethics, conflicts of interest. And I am complaining to everybody addressed in this email, in this dialogue, every board executive compliance official and organization that regulates the securities industry. 
in the United States of America. This is extremely wrong. It is outrageous that Joel Leslie Koningsberg would sign Eric Nicholas Frias' 89 pages of lies, ignorance, and defamation of me and against me three days after I filed the CFP board complaint because of proven fraudulent signatures and criminal activity money laundering in my deceased client's accounts. Koningsberg should have immediately recused himself given that he was A, the disciplinary chair of CFP board and ethics commission, Joel Leslie Koningsberg, you have no ethics. My May 1st, 2023 complaint against the Blights at all specified my FINRA regulatory complaints and you are an arbitrator. This is for FINRA. This is 100% unethical and a huge conflict of interest. And I am taking this to FINRA and all regulatory bodies as CFP board and its Morgan Stanley hitman must immediately cease and desist and apologize. I have attached a picture, well, you're not going to see it right now, but just Google him, Joel Koenigsberg, C-O-N-I-G-S-B-E-R-G, with his wife and one of his children, a daughter, bragging what a great parent he is. Wrong, Mr. Koenigsberg. You are a misogynist pig, completely unethical to not recuse yourself from the defamation and attempted character assassination of me. And you are a FINRA arbitrator. I have emailed you multiple times who the Blythe brothers, Lauren Scott Kyes, Kristen Diane Wasilewski, i.e. Kristen Wasilewski Mirabelle or Kristen Mirabelle. She uses a fake name for her LPL correspondence that she did with me. John Alexander Moore, Paul Victor Horiat III, John Scarabino, Denise Scarabino, and others have totally falsified FINRA broker check reports. And you are a FINRA arbitrator and did not recuse yourself or speak up. You are a pig and should not be trusted to manage anything, anyone's money, or anyone. You are devious and a liar. The 89-page motion for immediate suspension of me is full of defamation and outright lies. To say that I waived my right to an attorney and spoke to the CFP board without an attorney present, and, and to say that I used the CFP trademark with the registered trademark symbol, oh, no, I didn't. I, I go by Global Fertility Business Intelligence and Credential Fertility Pro. I have two acronyms for my journalism. I did not once use the registered trademark for my journalism on this account that you were reading my journalism on. So that's not true. I didn't publish any PII, personally identifying information, or anything confidential. Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Act. Aaron. Fair use. Aaron, er Eric Nicholas Frias's 89 page document was never signed, but it has his picture all over it because he was printing out from his LinkedIn, my LinkedIn's. So it's pretty much 89 pages of um, horrible defamation, vicious, nasty, misogynist, I mean, lies, and then bits and pieces of my articles is from stalking my personal LinkedIn and has Joel Leslie Koningsberg of Morgan Stanley's name on it too. I've asked many times for the 89 page motion to be wet signed by Joel L. Koningsberg and Eric Nicholas Frias and sent to me via mail, United States mail. Nobody has wet signed anything, but an out of the blue emergency hearing within the past 24 hours based on the defamatory false 89 page document that was never even signed. Your motion needs to be wet signed by Joel L. Koningsberg and Eric Frias. It's not a valid motion. You're not even signing it, but you're signing a motion to immediately suspend me, but no one would ever sign or take accountability for anything else. It makes no sense. It's a complete witch hunt. It, it should be illegal in the United States of America. This type of harassment should get people put in jail. I mean, it's horrible what Joel Koningsberg and Eric Frias are doing, and Aaron Copel is supporting it. Um, CFP board number one. CFP board took down and cited journalism on a personal, non-business, journalism-only social media account of mine that was clearly disclaimed as 
journalism only, personal and non-business. Number two, Eric Frias lies and says that I use CFP trademark on that account. Absolutely false, as I removed it and used CFP for Fertility Pro and for Global Fertility Business Intelligence, GBFI, my journalism brand, because people nicknamed me the Fertility Pro, and so that stuck. And when I removed my business, Twitter and LinkedIn years ago, I just, it stuck. It is outrageous that CFP board would state so many lies. Nowhere in your motion do I use the CFP trademark or even advertise myself as one. It was journalism only and clearly disclaimed as such as I took my business Twitter and my business LinkedIn down a long time ago and LPL Financial knew this as we have to subscribe to Social Patrol when we use um, business social media. And LPL Financial was well aware of my OBA for writing of 12 years and when I went off my business LinkedIn and business Twitter and Social Patrol. Frias lies. Number four, Frias and Koningsberg completely lie and say that I met with the CFP board and waived my right to an attorney. I never talked to the CFP board about any of this at all. This is completely false. This motion is highly illegal, highly defamatory, and I am going to be forced to publish the entire 89 pages and all of my replies if the CFP board does not cease and desist within 24 hours and apologize. Helen Ramirez O'Dell was a public figure in Illinois and Chicago across many areas and even nationally in some and is a well-known speaker and author. She, she actually was key in the Equal Rights Amendment ERA and also for National Association of Mental Illness. For um, NAMI she was very vocal and her daughter and her were very big legislative figures but she, she was a public figure by far and is well-known speaker and author. She's authored a book, she's authored talks, papers. She's in a lot of webinars. She's a nurse, nurse educator, mental health advocate, women's right advocate, pioneer, etc. Six, Illinois legislature filed a House resolution and a Senate bill immediately after Helen died and embarked upon very public campaign fundraising during the midterm elections in Chicago which was published and later discovered. It was learned that there was a 100% public probate estate opened on July 8th for Helen. Her husband, second husband had one opened earlier. And then on July 8th, when hers was opened, his was extended by 14 months until the end of September of this year. And Helen wanted to avoid probate at all costs. We went over that in estate planning meetings with Reuben Law. They knew that, they knew she wanted to avoid probate. I don't know why they opened the probate estate. It was learned that there were Cook County Court and Cook County Recorder of Deeds records because the Blyce and the Rubens were transacting in Helen's estate without telling me Helen's CFP of 12 years and without telling LPL Financial or the Chicago Public Schools Annuity Company Corbridge Financial previously AIG, previously Valak Variable Annuity Life Insurance Company, and without telling Helen's main bank either. I learned all of this on the morning of October 20th because um, it was my job to alert everybody because I was the CFP that she passed away and nobody had been told ever. Six, Illinois let... Okay, we read that. Um, seven, also an opportunist and vulture woman and client of the Blythe lies and published lies about being Helen's best friend and by Helen's bedside as she lay dying. And she was trying to control Helen's money, but admitted to me and my mom, because we were given by mutual friends of mine and Helen's and colleagues, this woman's name is someone who might be in touch with the daughter and we're told to contact her, that she did not know Helen had a special needs family trust and 
that that's what the woman told me and my mom and that the disabled beneficiaries never had a financial advisor. She didn't know that because they could not have assets in their name or they would lose their free government benefits. This 85 year old woman told me and my mother that she was lying and did not really ever even know the daughter at all. She got very uncomfortable because she was lying so much that she finally admitted it. This woman claims to be a famed actress, a poor one at that poor actress. Eight, I have been a Northwestern University and magazines professionally trained journalist for 30 years. My news analysis, commentary, commentary and criticism on things in the public domain and public stories issues is 100% protected under fair use um, U.S. Code Section 107 of the United States Copyright Act and other law. Um, you can find that at law.cornell.edu edu in a lot of places also quoting from old older pat quinn legislation that has stuck the legislation in illinois will help local law enforcement community organizations and disability advocates across the state of illinois to protect our most frail and vulnerable persons with disabilities rep harris said this has been based on a tremendously successful model the state has used to protect senior citizens from abuse neglect and exploitation.